from Hollywood, welcome to Starlight Mystery Theater and another episode in the series, Matthew Slade, Private Investigator. We invite you to take your seat as Matthew Slade unfolds the incredible Dr. Lintz. In my job, the hours are odd. So are the circumstances and the people I meet. You could even call some of them dangerous. My calling card reads, Matthew Slade, private investigator. Friday night. And for the first time in months, an entire weekend to myself. I was driving north on Highway 1, headed for the quiet solitude of the mountains, away from people, traffic. The road ahead was black and empty. The headlights of the Continental cut a tunnel of light through the darkness. As I rounded a bend, I picked up the outline of a car pulled to the shoulder of the road. The woman stepped from the shadows and waved for me to stop. Can you help me, please? Now, oh, what's the trouble? My car refuses to go. No? I don't know what's wrong. It just stopped. You mean the engine just died out on you? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like you're out of gas. Yep, that's your problem. Oh, you must think me stupid to allow myself to run so out of gas. That can happen to anyone. Well, there's not much we can do here. I'll drive you down to the next town. Thank you. Your uh, accent sounds German. You been in the States long? Long enough. Uh-huh. Where are you headed? No place in particular. Uh, by the way, my name's Matt Slade. Erica Lynn. I seem to remember that name. You should. We met before? Oh, no, Mr. Slade. We've never met. That's funny. I could swear I've... Uh... Oh, yes, now I remember. It was Kyle Lynn's. And you're... His widow. I turned to look at her. I found myself staring down the muzzle of a German Luger. I make it a habit never to argue with a lady. Without her noticing, I triggered the tape recorder. As I did, I heard the sound of a helicopter. Twenty-five yards further on, the road emptied into an open field. A small helicopter sat there, waiting. A burly, ugly-looking pug sat at the controls. Erica addressed him as Franz. Seconds later, we were in the air. I tried to sort things out in my mind. I knew that Erica's husband, Kyle Lintz, had been executed in San Quentin's gas chamber two years ago. My investigation into a murder case at the time had a lot to do with putting him there. I was puzzled. If she wanted revenge, why all this intricate byplay? She could easily have ended it at the roadside. I could only guess that someone else was pulling the strings. We were in the air for over an hour when the terrain below began to look familiar. We were over Lake Tahoe. A few minutes later, we settled down into a small clearing. A car was waiting there for us. We drove to a castle-like home, set well in amongst the trees. We entered the house, Erica pointing the way with her luger. Then we stopped outside a large door. When do I meet the lord of the manor? Your curiosity and impatience will not serve your cause. You will wait. He will greet you soon enough. I shall leave you now. You will wait here, Mr. Slade. I glanced about the room. The only light came from a fireplace. A fireplace large enough for a man to walk into. The vast marble floor held only two throne-like chairs and a table. It was like something out of King Arthur. The silence was suddenly broken by someone at the door. I couldn't see who it was at first. Then he came closer. The light from the flames cast weird shadows across his face. Welcome, Mr. Slade. It is Dr. Linz, isn't it? Ah, then you have not forgotten. We met only once, but then you're not the kind of person one easily forgets. A compliment. Please, sit down, Mr. Slade. Make yourself comfortable. May I pour you some cognac? Fine. Here you are. Very relaxing. Now, it uh, might also help me to relax if I knew whether I was your guest or... Uh, your prisoner. And consider yourself a, a captive visitor, Mr. Slade. Well, that answers the what. Now, how about the why? 
I have been planning this meeting for some time, to be exact, ever since my son's execution. I am a man who believes in a scientific approach to everything. All life must have a purpose, and so must all death. Since he was innocent, my son's death has no purpose. That brings the scales to an imbalance, if you follow me, Mr. Slade. As a man of science, it is my duty to restore that balance. Well, what makes you think your son was innocent? He denied his guilt. I believe him. The evidence proved otherwise? The evidence. The evidence you supplied the police. It wasn't just the evidence I supplied. The police had their own. Ah, but yours was the most damaging to my son. Without it, the police had a circumstantial case. Did best. That's your opinion. Ideal, in fact, Mr. Slade, not opinion. You've deluded yourself into thinking your son was innocent instead of accepting the fact. The fact, Doctor, that your son was a murderer. Enough! Now that will be enough, Mr. Slade. Your words will not buy you your freedom. Nor will they save your life. My life? You plan... You plan to kill me? Uh, nothing quite <laughs> that deliberate. Ah, well, what is it, Mr. Slade? You, you look strange. The, the cognac, you... I took the liberty of curtailing any physical action on your part to leave by... by placing a drug in the cognac. I, I, I can't move. You will find that rather difficult. What are you going to do? I, I have plans for you, Mr. Slade. Beautiful, beautiful, scientific plans. <laughs> Hello. Jonesy, sit to Nellie. Do you have any idea where Matt is? By now he should be comfortably settled in a mountain cabin. With all the comforts of a weekend frontiersman. It looks like something's happened to Matt. No, what is it? Uh, nothing to get alarmed about, just yet. But I've received a report from traffic division. They found Matt's car abandoned near Muir Beach. Muir Beach? But he was going to Clear Lake. I'm going down to take a look at the car. Oh, I'd like to go too. Could I, Sergeant? Of course. I'll pick you up in 15 minutes. <laughs> When I opened my eyes, I found myself lying on the floor of a small room. It was bare of any furniture or windows. One wall had a faint outline of where a door might be. And my head was still foggy and my body felt weak from the drug. How are you feeling, Mr. Slade? <laughs> Lince? Yes. The effect of the drug should have gone off by now. Where, where are you? They're not far from you, Mr. Slade. The room you're in is five foot out and for first circuit television. The small glass above the door is the camera lens. I can see and hear you quite clearly. What do you intend doing? Uh, I should be delighted to tell you that, Mr. Slade. Uh, without your knowledge, what I intend doing will serve no purpose. If you intend killing me, why don't you get it over with? First, I want you to know, Mr. Slade, that you are about to make an important contribution to sight. What I am seeking is what effect the knowledge of impending death will have on the human brain. Uh, that is to say, how many times can a person be brought to the brink of death with his full knowledge and still maintain mental balance? An interesting question. I don't you agree? You are insane. You're using the name of science as an excuse for your own lunacy. I make your accusations, Mr. Slade, if it makes you happy. <laughs> you have little else left in this world. The first experiment will commence soon. Soon. The method, I'm sure, will intrigue you. <laughs> I had no way of knowing just how much time had passed. The seconds seemed like minutes, and the minutes like hours. The first experiment started. The room began to fill with water. In no time, the water level was waist high. Then up to my shoulders, I took a last gasp of air as the water reached ceiling level. I knew the end was near. It was very close. The closer Mr. Slade comes to the brink of death, my dear, the more effective the result. What are they doing here, Lynn? It's... it's for Kyle, you must remember that. For Kyle, my dear, and for science. But is it right to take the law into your own hands? The law killed my son. You have said you have proof of Mr. Slade's guilt. If we give it to the police... I have heard enough, Erica. We'll not discuss this matter any further. Then show me the proof. Perhaps then I, I can justify what, what you are doing. You doubt my word? I never have in the past. 
I've, I've done everything you've asked of me. Then do not question me now. But I must. Erica, does it really matter now who is the guilty one? What do you mean? You insist on knowing the truth. Very well. Kyle was guilty. No. The proof was from Kyle's own lips. Then how can you blame Mr. Slade? Whether Kyle was innocent or guilty makes no difference. Mr. Slade was the one responsible for his execution. That makes the conditions perfect for his being a subject for my experiment. Avenging Kyle's death is not the reason you wanted Mr. Slade. You are only looking for an excuse. A justification to subject someone to your hideous experiments. Surely you feel guilt for what you are doing to him. None whatsoever. Stop now before it's too late. I won't allow you to interfere in my work. I won't allow it. Mr. Slater, uh, are you all right? I feel groggy. Yes. I made you some soup. It will help you regain your strength. Why are you doing this? Because I must. Your father-in-law wouldn't approve. Finish the soup. You need your strength if you're going to escape. Escape? I'm going to help you, Mr. Slade. Now, why this change of heart? I've been wrong. I thought revenge for Kyle's death was what I wanted more than anything. Until Stefan told me that Kyle was guilty. He admitted that? Yeah. He's lost all contact with reality, Mr. Slade. He's obsessed with this experiment. Yeah. Well, I'd say he's gone completely out of his mind. He needed a reason to subject you to his experiment. To satisfy his conscience by believing he was avenging Kyle. Yeah, well, that doesn't make him any the less dangerous. Yeah. You have a plan for getting out of here? He has all the exits monitored, except for a tunnel under the house. That's our only hope. How do we get to it? There's an entrance from the cellar. The tunnel leads out above the river on the opposite side of the hill. The road to town is not far from there. I'll show you the way. How much further? Not far. The tunnel turns sharply to the right. Right up ahead. You can see the exit from there. Another few feet around the bend. There's a... Oh. Oh, An iron gate. It's sealed off. I did not know there was a gate. Well, maybe I can move it. Won't budge. Well, where do we go from here? There's no place to go, Mr. Slade, except back the way we came. Well, we'll go back. Maybe we can find another way out. Come on. Still a chance the good doctor hasn't discovered our absence. I wouldn't count on that, Mr. Slade. <laughs> Lynn. Lynn. I am here, Mr. Slade. Right here on the other side of the gate. It was foolish of you to try to escape. Has he harmed you, my dear? No. This was my idea. You? Aiding him? I never dreamed that you would be disloyal to me, to Kyle. I beg of you, Father. Forget the revenge. Uh -huh. <laughs> there was more to this than merely vengeance. I told you that. You mean your experiments? Yes. My experiments. They're a figment of your twisted imagination. They have no scientific basis, Linz. Let us help you, Father. Help me? Yes. Yes, of course. You both can help me. <laughs> you, you will remain here where you are for now. Yes, I, I must prepare. I shall return soon, and then, then you will give me all the help I need. <laughs> This is Sergeant Donnelly, San Francisco Police. I'd like to speak with Sheriff Rogers. Yeah, I'll hang on. They're calling him to the phone. Oh, I hope our time isn't running out. Uh, hello? Sheriff Rogers? This is Sergeant Sid Donnelly, San Francisco Police. I'm calling on an urgent matter, Sheriff. Every minute we delay could cost a man his life. Now, here's what I'd like you to do. And Erica Lentz and Dr. Stephen Lentz have a home on the north shore of the lake. They're holding a man by the name of Matthew Slade. And we think they mean to kill him. I'm on my way there by plane. I should be there in an hour. I'll meet you at the Lynn's home. Yeah, and hurry, Sheriff. He's on his way, Jonesy, and I'd better be on mine. Let me come with you. I'd rather you stayed here. Please. Okay, there's no time to argue about it. Let's go. Eric and I were still locked in our tunnel cell. I was examining the iron gate which blocked our entrance back to the house when an idea came to me. What are you doing, Mr. Slade? 
I can jam these rocks through this opening at the top of the gate. Uh, yeah, it's working. I do not understand. What does that do? Well, it's not an immediate solution to our problem, but it may buy us some time. We can't get out, but if the gate won't open, then the good doctor can't get in. Now, there, that should keep him away for a while. Oh, what good is time, Mrs. Lee? Well, I'm hoping by now some people are aware of what's happened. How could anyone know? I have a tape recorder in my car. I turned it on while we were driving to the helicopter. If the police have found the car and played that recording, well, it should lead them right here. Shh. Listen. He's coming. Someone's with him. Sorry to keep you waiting. I know you are both anxious to make your contribution to science. Open the gate, Ron. You can tell your boy to stop trying, then the gate won't open. What is wrong, Ron? Stand aside. I told you I took care of it. Clever of you, Mr. Slade. Ron, go to the laboratory. Bring the laser quickly. I admire your ingenuity, Mr. Slade, but it will only serve to delay the inevitable. Maybe. <laughs> I dare say that, that you are the most optimistic person I have ever met. Accept your fate, Mr. Slade. It will make it so much easier for us all. Father, Fire, Derrick. I never intended to harm you, my dear, but you leave me no choice. Leave her out of this. You cannot reason with a madman. We are going to die. <laughs> die? That is right. Yes, die. <laughs> Lynn seemed to be in another dimension. His eyes looked right through us as he talked. They grew large, and his maniacal look became more intense. Then Franz returned, carrying a peculiar-looking instrument that resembled a rifle but was much bulkier. Lynn took the instrument and pointed it at the gate. Anything in the path of the laser will be instantly destroyed. I pulled Erica to one side of the tunnel. Lynn steadied the instrument. A series of light beams shot out from it. The iron bars were severed as neatly as if they were made of putty. <laughs> Impressive, Mr. Slade. Incredible. What is it? A laser gun. Scientifically, light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. A commanding weapon. Now, step this way and please do not be foolish enough to try anything. You have seen what the laser can do to metal. Imagine an impact on human flesh. I had no inclination to tangle with Linz, as long as he held the laser. He motioned us through the tunnel into the house and finally into his laboratory on the second floor. He instructed his mute servant, Franz, to strap Erica and me to two large tables set in the middle of the room. As Franz approached me, I grabbed his arm, twisting it behind his back, pulling him between Linz and me. Foolish move, Mr. Slade. Let him go. Not a chance. If you intend using that, you'll have to kill Franz, too. You think I wouldn't? I'll give you just three seconds to release him. If you do not, need I tell you the consequences. Three seconds. As he reached the count of three, I shoved Franz toward him and dove to my right. I could see the flash of the laser. My head struck the table and I fell into a whirlpool of darkness. When I regained consciousness, I found myself strapped at the table... Pungent odor filled the room. I rolled my head to the left and saw France lying on the floor. Not a pretty sight, Mr. Slade. You are as much to blame as I. Be thankful it wasn't you or Erica. Where is Erica? The table behind you. What have you done to her? A simple injection. She is unconscious. And now, Mr. Slade, <laughs> this hypodermic is for you. Sparkling will do no good. Those traps can hold a man with, with ten times your strength. Only a fool continues to resist when resistance is futile. Ah, there. Ah, it is done. What was in that syringe? You have a curious mind, Mr. Slade. I have injected both you and Erica with a substance which will set into operation within your bodies a dehydration process. Death will come slowly and painfully. You will have endless time to contemplate it. Yes. Yes, I think I shall... I shall make this your last experiment. The injection began to take effect. 
A numbness crept through my bones. My head was swirling. I was on the brink of unconsciousness. Lynn started removing the straps that bound me to the table. I fought the narcosis with the last bit of resistance left in me. Lynn's would think me too weak now to try anything. I knew this would be my last chance for survival. As he removed the final strap, I summoned every ounce of strength left in me and swung my right hand to his face. He slumped to the floor. I was sure I had only a few conscious minutes left. I made my way to the door, down the stairs, out onto the front drive of the house. I stumbled and fell, my head ringing with a thousand bells. At first, the police siren seemed to be a part of them, but then I saw the car and the two officers running toward me. Matt? Yes. What's happened to you? Drugged the house. Are they in there? Yes. Wait. The girl. Okay. Dr. Lynn's mad. Be careful. Deadly weapon. Well, someone's in the doorway. Lynn's. The, uh, Sheriff, cover him. Welcome, gentlemen. The laser. Watch out. <laughs> of the officers was hit by the laser, but his bullet had found its mark. What I had anticipated to be a quiet weekend of solitude had turned into an incredible nightmare. For the first time, I realized that this very Black Friday was also the 13th day of the month. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.